All right, we are now walking to the Kilimanjaro Safari. This is the last ride of the day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. They're getting ready to close, so we're taking the last ride available. As you can tell, there's no wait time or anything. It's like five minutes before seven, and this park closes at seven. And we're taking the standby route. Here's some of the decorations that they have here as you walk by. Looks like there might have been some type of, yep, there's some birds over there in the distance. They look like they have mohawks. It's kind of nice that they have those things for those who have to stand in a standby line. <clears throat> they also have these placards with some little fun facts about the animals. Oh, I love riding this with no line, just walking right through. Because this is one of those rides that usually has a 60 minute wait time or more. Hello. They've been keeping her out longer. As you approach the loading platform, please note that it is divided into two distinct zones. Whoa, look at the that. Is the loading zone also. I don't know what that is. So I don't know if that's a, some two type two of rabbit four. with those ears. Zone two is immediately behind it. As you move out into zone two, oh. please note the four circles at the feet in each row of the zone. <laughs> that was funny. What kind of rabbit was that? Thanks. Oh, that's kind of neat. They let me get pretty close to it. <clears throat> oh man, there's hardly anybody on this truck Two. Alright, we're loading. Sorry, it's not awarded. That means that thank you very much. And so, Healy, I don't think we'd like to stay here in Rome today. Let's go. Alright. Jumbo friends, my name is Mackenzie, and I'll be your safari guide through the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Just a couple safety reminders before we get this show on the road. Please remain seated at all times and also keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle. We are going to start our journey off in the Little Aturi Forest. A lot of the animals in this forest are known for their very unique patterns on their fur that help them blend into their surroundings. So it might be a bit harder to see, so we're going to keep our eyes open. On the right is the Okapi. They kind of look like they're not related zebras. Actually, the only relative of the giraffe. And we know that because both the Okapis and the giraffe have the same skull shape and the same long prehensile tongue. On the left, there's a saddle-built stork standing there. That's a female. She is yellow eyes. The male has brown. The saddle-built storks don't vocalize like other birds. Instead, they rattle their bills together to make noise. That's how they communicate with one another. And their wingspan can get to about nine feet wide, which is the same width as the canopy above your head. On the right on the top of the hill, there's a greater kudu. It's kind of on the other side of the bushes now. The greater kudus are a type of antelope. There's we're in a run -in. On the left, they're even running. The black rhinos are the smaller of the two African rhinoceros species. They do get to about 3,000 pounds. They're usually found alone, on, uh, unless it's a mom with a baby. They're just pretty solitary animals. Never seen him run before. That was cute. 
They, uh, their horns are made out of keratin. It's the same thing our hair and nails are made out of. Look at this orange color, and then there's uh, those greater kudus. So these are all females. Only the male greater kudus have the horns, but both male and female bongos have them. And these antelopes both have white stripes on their side, while the okapis have them on their legs. But the stripes are there to kind of mimic the sun rays coming through the trees, help them blend in. The bongos are specifically very good at hiding. They are known as the ghosts of the forest. It's very rare to see them out in the wild because they're super shy, very good at camouflage. We're going to make our way out of that forest. And at the bottom of this hill is the Safi River. Safi is Swahili for fresh. So we'll see some freshwater friends like these pinkback pelicans down here. They love these quiet and shallow backwaters. And then in the water, kind of over your right shoulder in that water, they're almost all, uh, almost fully submerged up in the water. Pretty hard to see them. They can actually fall asleep under the water. And the pelicans, they are nesting right now. It is kind of mating season for them. They are colonial nesters, which means they return to the same place each year in big colonies that can get to 500 pairs of pelicans. We'll keep our eyes open for any more hippos. They fall asleep under the water because they can hold their breath for about eight minutes. And their body will naturally float them up to the surface to get a breath without waking them. Just like how our body turns us in our sleep. So we'll keep our eyes open for any shadows under there. Usually they do come out at nighttime to graze grass and they roam large distances so i think the ones over here probably are roaming around somewhere they can get to like roam six miles in a single night wow. and then coming up on our left are the nile crocodiles the largest crocodilians in africa Repel. like this one under the water on the left down there down through bone. However, they can also be very gentle too. They'll scoop up their baby's eggs inside their mouth if there's any danger. They'll even roll them around against their teeth with their tongue to help them hatch. Sometimes baby crocodiles will even get to ride in their parents' mouth a little faster over large distances. And speaking of large distances, looks like we're about to head into the savannah. You can see a lot farther up ahead. There are a lot less trees and bushes. It also means there are less places for the animals to hide. So they cannot rely on their camouflage to keep them safe out here. As much as the friends we saw earlier in the forest, instead, savanna animals must rely on their speed and agility to keep them safe. See some wildebeest off in the distance. Let's see what other fast animals we can find out here. They're on that side of the savannah. The landscaping out here is kept very neat and tidy by the residents. Like those wildebeest, they mow the lawn. There's some tall animals that will trim the trees. And some big animals that like to knock over trees to make room for new ones to grow. So we'll see if we can find any of those. We have a bunch of termite mounds all around. Termite mounds are made out of dirt and dung and spit, and they bake in the savanna heat, so they're as tough as concrete. Whoa. So the uh, big animal, like elephants, we use them to get uh, scratch an itch. So on the right there, that one has been worn down over the years. And some of the smaller animals, we'll climb to the top of that one to keep a lookout. The termite mounds. They are not solid, they are uh, uh, pious, and they have a lot of places for the termites to hide in. It's like a big fortress for them. Yeah. On the top of the hill, looks like we have so many coley cattle and some wildebeest. The coley cattle are one of the two domesticated species we have here on the reserve. They are considered sacred, so they're never used for meat or milk. They're more like a symbol of wealth. 
So the more Ancoli kettles you have, the more money you got. Looks like there's two over there. So Ancoli kettles, you can kind of see their horns from over here, about four feet long each. And the wildebeest, they all have the horns too. The wildebeest usually use their horns as a way to protect themselves. Also use it uh, to dig up roots and stuff to eat. And the Ancolis use them for protecting themselves too, but they also use it to regulate their body temperature. So since their horns are huge, they have a lot of blood vessels in them, so they'll tilt their head back and forth to cycle the blood around and it cools down and then it'll cycle back into the rest of their body to cool their temperature. I think maybe there's a somebody standing in the road up ahead. That's why we stopped for a second. Their grips of them can range into the hundreds of thousands. Left are the giraffes. Look at them, they're all over giraffes. They have darker spots than the other species. They're also taller on average. Get around 18 to 20 feet tall. And they have the two little ossicones on their head, which are horns covered in fur. Because of those long legs, it takes a lot of energy to sit down and stand back up. So giraffes will stand for most of their life even while they're sleeping and while they're giving birth which means the first thing a baby giraffe experiences is gravity they fall six feet to the ground jump starts their lungs gets them ready to run within an hour of their life So they don't really need to sleep a whole lot, they only need about 30 minutes a day. And they don't need to do that consecutively, they could just take a couple power naps. And that clears up the rest of the day for eating. They'll spend up to 20 hours eating or chewing their food. They're like uh, ruminants, they're, they're like cows. So they have four chambers in their stomachs. So they'll chew the food, swallow it. They'll go through one section of the stomach to partially digest it. Then they will regurgitate it and chew, swallow, over and over and over again. Yeah, it's like a purplish, blackish color. We don't really know why, but our best guess is that the dark color helps protect their tongue from getting sunburnt. It's, you know, they eat a lot, their tongues are out. Okay. Looks like this one's coming to check out what's going on. This is the youngest one up ahead. <laughs> She's like, what's going on over here? Got any snacks? <laughs> it does look like she's like trying to see what's happening. That's funny. Why are you stopped? So, must be a rhino. Oh, yeah. They've been in and out of the road all day. Good luck convincing one to move. 
And uh, we couldn't even go for it even if we wanted to because now the draft's blocking the road. <laughs> But they make the same noise that goats do. I never heard them before. Kind of cool. You said they don't like to sit down, but they, they do sit down on occasion? Yeah, they do. Usually, um, not really in the wild, but out here they feel pretty safe, so they'll sit down. Just takes a lot of energy, so they don't love to do it. Looks like uh, they're about to clock out over there. Yeah. The uh, most of the zoos will have like a natural barrier, so you can't really tell unless you know what you're looking for. So yeah, on the left, there's some chains down there on that road. That's the um, cow guard. That's more trouble than it's worth on it. That's cool. And all the animals have. Um, like they could choose whether they want to go in for the night. Usually the wildebeest will stay out all night out here. And when that happens, the zookeeper has to stay here all night too. <laughs> yeah, keep an eye on them? Yeah, just like if they are on this, uh, if they're not in their night house, somebody has to keep an eye on them. I think if they're in the night house, everybody could go home though. Ever happened where they all decide to go in the house at the night? Yeah, that, it's usually what happens, but um, they're they're very well like accustomed to their like little uh, what's it called routines, their routine. So some of the you know they're trained, but it's more like a routine. Like they know I go in now, and here's an elephant on the left. Here, this is an African elephant. Look at his little foot. <laughs> this is the biggest elephant. He's 42 years old and 13 feet tall. And usually the male elephants like to hang out by themselves while the females and the babies will live in a big matriarchal herd. He's getting a little snack. An elephant will eat up to 300 pounds of food in a single day. It's a lot of hay, a lot of carrots and plants. It's a lot. Up ahead, we got some greater flamingos. They're called greater because they are the tallest flamingo. When they stand up straight, they get to about four to five feet tall. You see those ones sitting down in the mud? They are nesting. So if one stands up, you might be able to see an egg. Flamingos are hatched small, fluffy, and gray. And within a year or two of their life, they eat so much shrimp, they turn pink. Look on the right. Is she digging a hole? <laughs> Like, I'm a <laughs> <shake>. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Sometimes they throw dust on their backs to cool down. Well, I don't know, she's just digging a hole there. Um, the wildebeest use their horns to dig a root, so maybe she's trying to find a snack in there. That's funny. There's another elephant on the left there. Elephants and rhinos have very th sensitive skin. So they both like the mud. On the left, this is a mud wallow where the rhinos roll around. The mud will coat their skin, act like a sunscreen, bug repellent, and moisturizer all in one. You see a lot of the rocks and trees around here are covered in that orange mud, probably from when one scratched their side to get some excess mud off. So we'll keep our eyes open for any of the white rhinos. I think they were the ones in the road, so they might be around here. But birds coming up on our left. There's a cheetah up on the top of that hill. Cheetahs are the fastest land animal. They can get from zero to 70 miles an hour in three seconds. But they can't maintain that speed forever. It is about a couple hundred yards before they must slow down. They're kind of like sprinters. And the yeah, other cool. There's some more over here. They're pretty hard to spot. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're neat. Uh, they cannot roar. Instead, she just purr and meow, just like a house cat. They're the biggest cat that can do that. There's another big cat coming up here, but uh, <laughs> don't look at that, buddy. 
there's a lion just lying around up there. He probably won't roar, uh, but at that time they do roar. At top volume it can be heard from about six miles around. There's another bunny. <laughs> so he's got that big fluffy head of fur protecting him, kind of like a helmet. She's around there too. The females do the hunting at night while the males stay at home, protects the cubs and the pride. There she is up there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you see there's like that moat th down there? Yeah. So that's what keeps them over there. And she's... <laughs> Man, I've never seen this many bunnies. Look, that's a good picture right there. Later. It's like cats looking out the window. <laughs> Those are African bunnies. Ha 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 ha. Uh, lionesses, they're the hunters, and they uh, hunt in a team. They're one of the only big cats that will hunt as a team. Most other cats are solo, like the cheetahs. Well, don't see any rhinos unless they went in. But on the right, there's a big pile of rhino poop. Oh, All the rhinos poop in the same place. And they use it as a way to communicate with each other. They'll all come over and smell each other's poop, see who's in the area, who's single and ready to mingle. <laughs> Sounds like a joke, but it's true. And on the right, there are a couple of the ostrich's eggs. I didn't see any of those ostriches, but each of the females in the area will lay their eggs together for safety. But they're very safe on their own. A single ostrich egg weighs as much as 24 chicken eggs. So they're so dense that an adult human can stand on one and it wouldn't even crack the shell. Can they leave them unattended? Sorry. What'd you say? Can they leave the eggs unattended? Yeah, so most of the animals know not to mess with the ostrich's eggs because they have a very powerful kick. But usually they'll probably come back in a second to check them out. They're usually not too far away for them. Uh, this is the warden's uh, post. Warren hangs out here. Got some, uh, if you see that yellow thing, the yellow and wooden thing in the middle yard, that's a beehive. That's how they get their honey. Uh, also serves another purpose. So here in Africa, unfortunately, sometimes elephants will roam into places they're not supposed to be. More specifically, they'll roam into farmers' fields and they trample and eat all the crops. That's not good for the farmers, they lose all that money. It's also not good for the elephants because it puts them in harm's way. So we've been trying to come up with a nicer and more efficient way of deterring elephants. And through a lot of research and observing the elephants here at Animal Kingdom, we learned that elephants are terrified of bees. They have a very sensitive skin and a great memory, so they never forget a bee sting. So anytime an elephant sees or hears a bee, they will run in the opposite direction. Give us a good idea to build those beehives around places we don't want the elephants to go. And it's a win-win-win situation for everyone. Nobody gets hurt. The elephants, almost said the elephants get to keep the honey. No, the farmers keep their honey and get some extra to sell. It's also good for the bees because they are near extinction. So it's good to help them out in any way we can by providing them with homes. The Elephant and Beast Project is a great example of how we can coexist with animals and all benefit each other. So it looks like we're nearing the end of our journey here. Hope you guys had fun, learned some new stuff. If you have any more questions, anybody in Jackie can answer that for you. <laughs> we don't like to say goodbye, because goodbye is far too sad and much too final. So instead of saying goodbye, we say kwa hari, which means to go well in Swahili. Oh, thank you! <laughs> if you're sitting on that right hand side, watch your hands or speed lakes, doors will be opening. Kwa hari!